Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com, ElectronicLessons.com, and PaintballProps.com. Today I want to talk about uh, our 400 farad 5.4 volt supercapacitor bank with 1.5 uh, amp charger. Uh, it's all in one. It comes with a, a 12 volt 2 amp AC adapter that plugs right in. As soon as you plugged in, you press the CHG button. Uh, CHG for charge it starts to charge when it's done charging uh, the LED will flash at which point you can press the CHG button again to reset the system then press it again to recharge if you are loading it at the same time uh, it's up to you I'll give you a demonstration in just a minute I'll be selling it in two configurations one with a voltage display option one without this is your output uh, you can uh, well, once the capacitors are charged, they can become, become completely isolated from the rest of the circuit, so the only leakage is in their internal leakage, which is very small. You can uh, access the power on the capacitors using uh, either these two pads labeled negative and positive, or this terminal block, screw terminal block, uh, with uh, labels cap minus, which is ground, and cap plus, which is the power stored on the capacitors. You can put that on a booster, you can do whatever you want. Um, Again, uh, I'll show you the version with the voltage display in just a moment. But let's give a demonstration. Plug in my AC adapter. Nothing happens until I press the magical CHG button. That click is the relay turning on, enabling the charge. One thing to note is the first time you charge it up, uh, after about 10 minutes, you'll, you'll notice a, a faint... Uh, maybe a burning smell and what that is is there are certain chemicals on the current limiting resistor that are burning off this resistor will get very 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 hot and on the back of the PCB it actually says in big letters HOT and a few exclamation marks so right away it starts to get warm and after after I say a minute it will get very hot hot enough to burn you so you want to be very very careful it's sitting about a centimeter off the board uh, it's not hot yet but it is certainly warm uh, so once the charge is o over with, it's, it's complete, the uh, LED here will blink, the capacitors will be isolated from the charge, and this resistor will cool down. Now, the burning smell, it only should only, should only really only happen the first time, the first time you charge it, and it's just burning off the chemical agents on the capacitor, uh, second, third time, and however many times you charge your bank after that, uh, you shouldn't notice that smell, but don't be deterred, don't worry too much about it, it's really not a big deal these capacitors or sorry resistors are made for uh, for high power so it's starting to get pretty warm right now in a matter of a minute or so it will become very very hot so again beware so if I want what I can also do is I can put other capacitors in parallel uh, so if I had another 5.2 volt or 5.4 volt bank uh, what I could do is I could put that in parallel and I could add, so I could add potentially as many capacitor banks as I wanted as long as the, the bank connected here to the positive and negative pin was of uh, a, a 5.4 volt capacity. You couldn't put a 2.5 or 2.7 volt capacitor in parallel. You'd need to make sure that your bank was equal relative to voltage to the bank here, which is 5.4 volts at 400 farads. So if I had another, say, 5.4 volt 3000 farad, I could just solder it in, uh, my bank positive negative to right here and I could make my uh, my bank significantly larger. So what will happen is you can actually use these two pads or the terminal block pads to measure the voltage. I've designed this to shut off at around 5.2 volts because I want I don't want to charge to 100 percent of the capacity. Supercapacitors like normal capacitors have a relatively large tolerance of 10% or more. So, you want to. I always like to make sure to charge just under the the rated maximum. Um, if you're interested in more interested in supercapacitors, I actually wrote an instructable, which can be found at instructables.com. Just uh, search "practical guide to supercapacitors" and it should pop up. It's pretty easy to follow. So, let's talk about the voltage display. This version is with the uh, voltage display. The voltage display has two mounting holes. Actually, the main board has four large mounting holes. Again. Well, this is an option. You do not have to buy the version with the voltage display. It's actually not very expensive. It's about $6 more. I'm also also going to have a booster. I'm going to demonstrate in seconds to see how you can boost the 
uh, 5.2 volts on this to up to 35 volts. So let me just start it up. So this is our input voltage. Let me press the charge button. And that is the charge on our capacitors. Once that reaches roughly 5.2 volts, um, the capacitors uh, will become isolated and the relay will turn off and we will see the input voltage. So why don't we just wait a little while and watch to see what happens when it stops charging. So there you go, 5.2 volts, the, uh, the voltage on the meter goes reverts back to the power supply voltage, and this LED will continue to blink until I press the charge button again, which resets the system, and I can press it again to recharge. And it, while it's charging, I can load it. I can use this terminal block or these two solderable ports to load something, to power something, even while it's charging. That's the option. Now this three, this uh, display has three wires on it, and on the back of the board, you can't see it right now, but there's three little ports that are, uh, the wires are soldered to. Red is V+, blue is REF for reference, and black is ground. And again, this is just an option, you do not need this. Next I'll show you a booster option. I've taken the outputs and I've connected it to the input of my booster. Now this is a high power booster. The input voltage is 5.2 volts. If I press this button, it shows me the output. I've programmed that to almost 35 volts. Using this potentiometer, I can turn the boost up to 30, 35 volts max. And I can turn it down as, uh, as far as my VIN, which is for roughly 5.2 volts. So this is the output right here. It's labeled, there's out plus and out minus. So this is why it's a variable battery. This is the best option. This is the most expensive, but certainly the best option. So, <coughs> excuse me. Now, the, the higher the differential between the input and output voltage, say there's 5 volts in the input and 10 volts in the output, you can source up to 3 amps with this. But, uh... If you bring the output voltage to say 20 volts, whereas the differential would be 15 volts, 5 volts in the input, 20 volts in the output, you'd probably source less than an amp. The higher the differential, the less current you can source. But you can always press this button to change between the input voltage and the output voltage, which again, very easy to tune. This would all come assembled for you. Uh, I will be uh, putting up uh, the different listings at engineeringshock.com and electroniclessons.com. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, it's a really, really neat product. Again, the only thing to really worry about is don't burn yourself on the on the uh, the current limiting resistor. Now, what I just realized is that my camera is picking up the sampling on the uh, display. Don't worry about that. That's actually it looks steady. The camera is uh, the camera is just showing the uh, multiplex change on there. If that makes sense. So again, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Take care and thanks uh, for watching, guys.